Hey yo, it's good job, Stinger, and today, instead of coming at you with a beat tutorial, I'm gonna be doing a sound design tutorial. And in today's sound design tutorial, I'm gonna be going over how to make some custom 808s using Serum. This has been a long-awaited tutorial, so I'm super excited to finally pump it out. So without any further hoopla, let's just get right to it. Now, for today's tutorial, we're gonna be using Serum, but you'd probably be able to replicate the same process using Vital, though I'm not 100% sure. So when you open up Serum, this is what's gonna show. First thing that we're gonna change is Oscillator A's wavetable, and we're gonna change it to a sine wave. So we're gonna go to analog and then analog BD sine. Most basic 808s are made using sine waves. So that's what we're gonna start off with here. Though later on, we are gonna be changing the wavetables in some more advanced techniques. But for now, we'll just stick with this. The next step in creating our 808 is pitch bending. The reason behind why most 808s have a really punchy and sharp transient at the beginning is because the pitch is being dropped rapidly, creating that punchy effect. So to do that, we're gonna focus in on this LFO right here. The first thing we're gonna do is create this shape. After that, we're gonna set the mode to envelope and turn off BPM. Envelope mode basically just makes it so that the LFO will impact the beginning of the 808 and no other parts. And then by turning off BPM mode, we're giving ourselves a more exact rate to toy around with. Now, most people like to route their LFOs to the coarse pitch when making their 808s but I personally prefer to route it to the master tuning of Serum. Now this is all up to personal preference, but I prefer the master tuning because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control. So to route our LFO to the master tuning, we're gonna go over to the matrix. For the source, we're gonna put down LFO one, and for the destination, we're gonna go to global and then master tuning. Now there's not gonna be any kind of pitch bending until we adjust the amount. If we have the amount way up here, it's gonna start from a really high pitch and then dip down to C. But then if we have it at a lower amount, there's not going to be a whole lot of pitch bending. So I like to keep the amount anywhere from 10 to 20. But what's great about sound design is that there's no limitations. Literally just make what sounds good to you. From there, we're going to listen to how our 808 sounds and then adjust the rate of the LFO. So I'm liking how it sounds right around 2.5 hertz. Now, if you listen closely, there's a really sharp initial transient in the 808. And to combat that, I'm just gonna put the attack up by a little bit. And then now here we have a super basic sounding 808. So now that we've got the basis of our 808, let's throw down some really basic effects. And don't worry if this is sounding too basic so far. Later on, I'm gonna go into some more advanced techniques to make your 808s a little bit more unique. But for now, I just wanna go over the basics. Now for effects, you could either use the built-in effects in Serum, or you could just add your own in your DAW. And I prefer to just work in FL Studio. The first thing that I'm gonna throw down is our bass. Literally, this plugin is such a game changer when it comes to making 808s. It really just brings out those low subby frequencies and makes your 808 sound a whole lot more full. So for the frequency, I'm going to throw it down to 32, and then I'll adjust the intensity accordingly. After that, I'm going to throw on something to boost the highs and make the 808 stand out a little bit more. And what I like to use for that is fresh air. So I'm just going to add a little bit of high air and a little bit of mid presence. After that, you can throw down an EQ and just adjust any frequencies to your liking. And the final basic effect that I'm gonna throw down is Soothe 2. This will basically just tame any harsh resonant frequencies. And since 808s are gonna be something that is gonna be blown through the roof, it's important to draw those back a little bit. So this is what our 808 sounds like before the effects. And this is what it sounds like after the basic effects. So that covers the basics of making 808s. But now we're gonna go over some more advanced techniques. The first of which is gonna be changing this wavetable. Some of my favorite wavetables to use in Serum are the spectral and the vowel wavetables. These just have such a weird and unique sound. Now, one issue you're definitely gonna run into when using alternate wavetables is you're gonna lose that subby sound provided by the sine wave. But don't fret, you're gonna bring that back by using the sub panel and then just have it set to sine mode. And then from there, you could just go through a bunch of different wavetables.
literally infinite possibilities. Now, if you like to do what I do and make giant 808 kits, you might find yourself running out of wavetables. And you can either install new wavetables from online, or you can input images into Serum to use as wavetables. Now, keep in mind that they do have to be PNG images. But let's say I wanted to use this PNG of the Looperman logo. All I'd have to do is drag it into Serum and it imports the PNG. And if you change the view, you could actually see the Looperman logo. It's super sick. And this just provides for endless possibilities of wavetable shapes. And this is actually what I made use of in both my redacted 808 kit and my backrooms 808 kit. Both of those kits have 100 808s. And for the redacted 808 kit, I took images of each SCP going from 001 to 100 and dragged them into Serum and made 808s out of those. And then for the backrooms 808 kit, I did the same thing, but with backrooms levels. So it's a super cool way to tie in other things you like into sound design. Like I love SCP stories. I love the backrooms. Room, so it was super cool to just toy around with those wavetables. Another thing you could do within Serum is to actually adjust the pitch bend. And I don't mean by increasing it, I actually mean by decreasing it. By decreasing it, you're going from the lower octave to the middle octave. So it gives a super cool, almost like reverse tape stop kind of sound. <laughs> Now there are a bunch of other things you could toy around with in Serum, such as the warp mode, the filters, other oscillators, but I'm going to let you guys toy around with that on your own as the tutorial would just be like 30 minutes long if I went over everything. Though the next thing you could do to make your 808s more unique is to add effects. And I don't just mean these basic effects. Quite literally, go through all of your plugins and see if they would sound good with the 808. You would genuinely be surprised what effects would sound good with 808s. For a kit that I just made, I made use of a ton of different effects. I threw on guitar amplifiers, I threw down phasers, vocoders, I threw down shaper box too. Like literally any effect that you have that will maintain the sub properties is a go. And even if they don't maintain the sub properties, what's great about our base is that you could literally just throw down our base below any kind of creative effects and it will reintroduce those subs. So yeah, just go through literally every VST that you have, go through all the presets and find what sounds good. And from there, you'll be able to make giant 808 kits with ease, as is evident by my three 808 kits that have 100 808s each. So yeah, that's going to pretty much cover how to make 808s using Serum. I thoroughly hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. Also consider checking out my Patreon where I post the FLPs to all of my beats in all of my videos. That way, if you wanted to study the arrangement, the mixing, the mastering, all that kind of stuff, it's going to be right at your fingertips. And also on the Patreon, I'll be throwing on my own Serum 808 preset. So if you're lazy like me and you don't want to follow all the instructions, all you have to do is download a preset. And finally, consider subscribing as I post one tutorial a week and two sound kits a month. Other than that, that's going to be it. Peace.